Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Online session on different topics in biology. Uh, my name is Ishfaq Bukhari and uh, uh, Dr. Kurotalan, she will be also available for, for any comment, but I took it personally to, to help you out to see uh, we will have different kind of teaching activities. Uh, today will be just a lecture. Uh, you could ask question. I hope everything is clear and you can see my screen if I am not shared as yet. Let me. Okay, I think it's not shared yet. So you can see uh, the screen. Anybody could raise hand or unmute yourself. Any student could just tell me if you can see uh, on the screen the chapter excretion. Yes, what? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I actually I have good experience with with uh, with uh, medical students that uh, I will try my best to clarify what exactly I know and to make it clear for you. And uh, learning basically is a mutual process. We learn from each other. I appreciate questions and I like those students who, who come up with tough, tough questions so that we can, uh, we can uh, basically, if you want to have good teachers, I think we want good students to come up with questions. So this, this, this will inshallah help. Uh, so today we'll talk about excretion. I think you covered last time respiration, different systems. So we'll move inshallah according to the sequence. And do let me know if you have any uh, feedback, you want to change the teaching style or you want to uh, focus on some topics. So as you can see here in excretion, I would, I would recommend that you should have this book with you whenever we are here for the session. Uh, so sometimes it's not very clear to read it on screen, uh, though I try my best to focus the camera as much as I can. So in this chapter, as you can see, every chapter, every activity has got some learning objectives. So here is the excretory system. So we need to talk about what are the excretory products that are formed in our body. So these are called the learning objectives. So how the kidney are basically excreting urea because urea is the major product or product of metabolism, which is taking place in our body. And, and as you know that urea is really toxic if it remains in the body. So it's really toxic. That's one of the reasons in ren renal impairment or kidney diseases. Uh, you have seen that they check the doctor would recommend urea and electrolytes. So urea is a diagnostic test for your kidney function. And electrolytes for your calcium and sodium, potassium, chloride, and all these are also uh, showing the the, the kidney function. There is another very common indicator for kidney function. Would you like to share that? What, what else we can check for the, to assess if the kidneys are functioning properly? And that is also used as a diagnostic test for renal function. Somebody would like to share if you have heard about that or you may have seen in the, some of the tests that people or, or doctors are recommending. Uh, creatinine. So I will not talk about creatinine a lot, but I mean, it's be better to focus on, th but yes, it's always good to have little integrated approach. Creatinine is also another way if it is basically clearing, uh, creatinine clearance is indicating kidney function. Uh, that's why if you have high plasma creatinine and the blood creatinine is more, that indicates that the kidneys are not functioning properly the way we are checking for urea. Uh, why the volume and concentration of urine varies from day to day? That is again very, very important. I'm sure that you have the answer for that, but we have to have scientific explanation for that. How urea is produced, there is another learning objective, how the kidneys produce urine and the dialysis machine or dialysis treatment of uh, kidney failure. That's why we have uh, for the patient who, who uh, those who, uh, whose kidneys are not working properly, 
uh, then they are uh, hospitalized in the hospital. We call it artificial kidneys, basically dialysis machine, where they filter the blood. As you know that usually, what is the role of, what do you understand by excretion? Generally, if we say excretion, what comes to your mind? Yes, uh, anybody would like to answer? Yes, go ahead, Yasra. Like to excrete waste products and toxic material. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yes, any toxic material, any waste products, because living system, as you know, is different from, from, the, from the other cell, you know, other systems we have. For in the living system or cells, there are millions of reactions taking place, many chemical reactions taking place on daily basis, every moment. And that is actually required for the cell survival. And during this process, there are many metabolites or waste products that are produced and that, that has to be excreted. So we have different pathways, how things are... <laughs> Uh, excuse me, I would appreciate if you could mute yourself, make sure that your microphone... Oh, no, you did something, right? My voice was just... Oh, sorry, so, I think I would mute all of you and then I would allow you uh, to unmute myself, okay? So that we don't have any disturbance. It's not kind of attendance. Uh, this is a just activity, a learning activity for all of us. Right. So excretion. So different pathways. Raise your hand. Those who can answer that you want to answer, raise your hand and I, I, I will unmute you. So first organ, which is very clear is kidney, right? Do you know any other organ, any other system responsible for excretion? Keeping in mind animals, human or body. Would you like to answer that? What about lungs? What does it do? Yes, yes, wrong. Okay, I will unmute you. And under excretory organ can be also lungs because carbon dioxide is a, a, a toxic gas, so it also has to be excreted out. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. So lungs. Okay. Any other system you have for the excretion? Think about your body. Okay. One, one thing that I want to make it clear here that uh, we don't want to focus much on facts and figure. You could integrate that with your own biology, bi biological system, your own body for how things are excreted from a body. First of all, kidney. You're in the form of urine. And then we have excretion through feces as well. Is bile or eliminating things through the, uh, through the feces and the intestine and through the feces, right? So there's another excretion system. And then through the sweat glands, you could see in the sweat and through the skin. There are many drugs, especially some urea is also excreted through sweating. So you think about your own body system, your kidney is doing the function, your uh, in the feces and then and the through the skin in the form of sweat and the through the lungs like respiratory gases this is why one of the thing that's called alcohol breath test uh, that is common in western countries in america and canada if uh, somebody is driving and they maybe the, the police or or notice that somebody is uh, uh, not driving properly so they have alcohol breath test so alcohol being a gas is also excreted through, through the lungs. Uh, when you are exhaling or inhaling, so during exhalation, you could also expel uh, alcohol and also volatile anesthetics, anesthesia. So if patient is going for surgery, uh, they are taking volatile anesthetic. They, you, you may have seen the mask, the gas, which is they are providing. Basically, these are anesthetics. So they are inhaling anesthetic and that is also eliminated through the through the lungs through respiratory system so your lung your your skin body uh, uh, through feces and also through kidneys so here in this chapter they have given a very nice trigger they call it bird droppings 
So I, I'm sure it, it, I'm, how important this for exam, I, I, actually I, I don't have idea about that, but I think this is really a nice trigger for you. There's sometimes you may feel that the, the dropping of birds and uh, sometimes you feel that they, they are basically feces, but these are not feces. Birds basically excrete urine and the semi-solid form, we call it paste form, paste-like structure. So it's semi-solid form, it's a viscous liquid. It's not uh, liquid urine like us, right? So birds do excrete a uh, semi-solid form of urine. And you may have seen hatching of uh, chicks, for example, from the eggs. And that's why it's again required as well. If chicks, for example, inside the eggshell are excreting liquid urine, so the whole eggshell will be filled with urine. And you know, the, the chicks are developing inside the egg. And that's why after uh, two, uh, two to three weeks when they are developed enough, they, they are coming out of the, are hatched from the, from the egg. So if they are excreting everyday urine in the liquid form, so it's really not good for the chick development. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the system. So they are uh, excreting semi-solid form. Which, which can be deposited at one side of the eggshell. You, you could see inside if uh, the chicks are hatching and you could see inside there's a thin film. This is called elentoes. This inside the elentoes is the uh, this uh, semi-solid urine is basically deposited. It's very easy also for the birds, for the mother birds or the parents bird to, to, uh, to tidy up the nests so that they can remove it very easily. And they are also giving one example here that uh, basically birds, especially they need more water, they need more energy, but they need to preserve water, especially those birds that are living in the, in the hot environment. So birds can survive with energy, they can take care of their energy requirement, but usually for water, this is why they may remain for longer time. They, they can survive even without water for a little longer time. They don't drink water just like us because they are not excreting liquid urine. They are not excreting much, much water from their body because they are basically farming semi-solid urine. So it needs more energy, uh, but they can take care of the energy. This is what they are saying because we have seen from our experience that birds can survive very efficiently, but, uh, uh, but without water, of course, they can die very easily. This is in severe drought or severe hot weather, especially in Saudi Arabia. You might see in the park, uh, some birds are dead, falling down from the trees. Uh, that shows that actually they cannot survive in very hot weather without water. And it's always recommended that you should put some water uh, in the garden or, or on the rooftop of your houses, somewhere in the open area. And inshallah will reward you for that, especially in this area. You might see people, they are putting water bottles there and, and some bowls for water so the birds and, and other animals like cats can drink for it. So this is one trigger uh, for this. So the basic point is that birds in every living system has an excretory system. So in some animals, they have one long tube uh, for whatever they ingest, you know, they uh, just excrete in the form of feces. And in case of fishes, for example, their excretory system is really different. So we'll go through, but I think we'll focus more, more, more on human physiology or uh, our own kidney system or biological system. So till here, if you have any, any question in this trigger, we call it trigger because it, it will stimulate your learning. Uh, this is something which is very interesting and, and many people are not aware of that. So there's why many good books, especially the, uh, the Cambridge system or the Scott Forceman and many other American books, and really they use trigger. Uh, this trigger is for the students to, to catch their interest so that they, 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 they are persuaded or they are convinced to know more. I'm sure this is clear. And, and then we move forward to the main topic. So what are the excretory products? This is a, a very, very important. You need to know what exactly are the excreted product. If you go through these paragraphs, I think what they're basically focusing on, they're all living cells. There are many reactions, metabolic, uh, metabolic reactions are taking place every moment. 
and, and the reaction of, for example, respiration that you have covered before in chapter 11, they are referring. And I would say that you should go back and refer to those chapters, you know, that will reinforce your learning. This is actually required. I always encourage my students that you should go back to this and then incorporate that piece of knowledge. And this is called integration of knowledge. You could integrate that, that piece of information which is needed here in this uh, re respiratory system or reaction of respiration, for example, uh, provide energy for the cell. As you know, this, the, the oxygen and glucose, how they are uh, metabolism takes place and how the ATPs are generated and that is required actually. Even picking up single pencil, right, is uh, uh, needs a lot of energy. Right? ATPs are consumed because there's a whole mechanism reflexes going from the higher center uh, and executing this function to pick up this pencil. So that's why this reaction is really very very important. So metabolic reaction they produce, as you mentioned before, some substances that are really we call it waste product that are not needed. Not only they are not needed, even if they remain in your body, they could be toxic as well. We call it poisonous. Similarly, take an example of drugs that you are taking. Simple Panadol, or we call it paracetamol. If you take this drug, uh, the basic idea is, the basic objective is that to relieve headache or fever, especially in Corona, everybody is using Panadol. But this Panadol, if it remains in the body for longer time, of course, is very toxic. Similarly, naturally, you have, you are eating, different nutrients are getting into your body, in your blood, getting to the cells, the cells are using them up and generating energy and building up bones, muscle, and all other physiological function to maintain good homeostasis, okay? To maintain good physiology that is actually required. So during that, during these reactions, there are many other substances are generated. We call it metabolism. Remember, metabolism is, in, is an integral activity of any living system. Consider plants, small animals, even the microbes, the germs, the virus, and everything that we are, we are basically dependent on metabolism. Uh, respiration, for example, produces uh, not only energy, uh, but also water and carbon dioxide. If you take water as an example, of course, we can make use of it. But what about carbon dioxide? Of course, we don't need it. This is what you mentioned, if you remember, Yusra. She, uh, she already answered that nicely, that this is really toxic for a body. It has to be expelled out of the body. And how it is, we are getting rid of carbon dioxide through our lungs, right? So we are inhaling oxygen and we are exhaling carbon dioxide. So, uh, but if you look at the carbon dioxide, uh, yeah, they have mentioned, I think, the excretory system here through lungs, through gills, and for example, in fish and sea animals, and also gas exchange through the surfaces. Some animals can also, uh, through uh, gas exchange, uh, takes place through the surface as well. So I think this is, they are talking about carbon dioxide, but when you go further, whatever carbon dioxide is generated, carbon dioxide is also used by plants to generate energy, you remember photosynthesis cannot take place without sunlight and carbon dioxide. This is during daytime, right? So the first part is talking about the living system or body system, for example, a human body system. And then the second part is talking about the, the, the carbon dioxide uh, consumption by plants for photosynthesis. But then they are saying, what about carbon dioxide in the night? In the daytime, we, we understand. Photosynthesis can take place only during daytime, right? You agree with that. You have already studied that. But what about night? So carbon dioxide in the night could even be toxic to plant cells. And these plants could also die. Uh, this is really, so we call it waste product. When we call it waste product, like carbon dioxide, which is, uh, which is made in the cell as a result of metabolic reaction. So as you mentioned, major waste product that we have here, one is carbon dioxide one of the major byproducts or waste products which, which is generated due to metabolic reaction is called carbon dioxide. This is a carbon dioxide. And to get rid of this carbon dioxide is called the process of excretion. This is called excretion. 
So I think it's a, uh, the key definition, they have mentioned the same thing. As you can see here in, in, in the definition, they are saying that the removal, uh, removal from organism of the waste products of metabolism. So what are those waste products? These are the chemical reactions uh, that are taking place and they are generating uh, byproducts. They are toxic materials and these substances are in excess of, of requirement as well. So sometimes uh, you do have, for example, we are eating barbecue, chicken, meat, fishes, we ha which is rich in proteins. So what exactly are proteins they are doing? Proteins are digested by proteolytic enzyme, proteolytic, I say proteolysis, proteo for proteins, lysis for breakdown. So you need some protein like pepsin or proteolytic protein that break down and the, uh, the proteins and they are also generating some byproducts. We'll talk about this in a while, okay? They have, uh, so this part is covering here and there is a very interesting thing they have mentioned, ejection, ejection. What is ejection? And how it is different from ingestion? I think I, I, we, can, we can make some kind of mnemonic as well. Try to make mnemonic for chapters if you can. Some kind of abbreviations. Your friend name could also, uh, you could fit some information over there. Uh, you could use any common things, you know, any name of a city where you can easily uh, memorize or recall some of the information. And that will help you, especially in, in the exam, if you are confused with the mixing up some information, always use mnemonic. So we'll talk about ejection and ingestion. So uh, we'll come to it. Uh, just uh, focus here on ejection and excretion, how it is different. So who would tell me how it is different? What is different between ejection and excretion if you have prior reading? Okay. Somebody else can also answer. Uh, you sir, let me give chance to other students if they can. Who has studied that? Make a common sense. Use your common sense. Ejection and excretion. Okay, Yusra. Or oh, Nabil. Okay, Nabil, can can you you answer? Then we'll come to Yusra. Sir, the ejection is the solid uh, waste product that is removed from my body, and uh -huh. uh, excretion is the liquid. Is the liquid uh, waste or water? So you are talking about the physical shape. Uh, okay, you are somehow near, but actually it's not the explanation. And you could read the book, you know, whatever is mentioned here, you can read the information and you can rephrase that in your own words. Uh, okay, Ahmed. Yes, sir. Uh, ejection is the uh, removal, uh, removal of cellulose because it cannot be digested. Okay. Not be digest, so digested by who? By what system? By our digestion system. What about animals? Yes. Animal can digest cellulose or not? No. They cannot. Mammals. Any animals? Animals like goat, sheep. They are always eating on cellulose. These plants, as you know, yes. the covering of the plant has cellulose. Okay, they can digest it. Yes. Okay, Humans. they can digest. Okay. So now make a difference. What is described here in the in the in the in the description under ejection and excretion? If I ask you, just tell me because it's a very short paragraph. You can read it just in split of second, and then you could tell me the answer. Okay, one second. Uh, uh, right, go ahead, Sando. Okay. Ejection is. Um the um, the um, i mean whatever we ingest and the part of the ingested food that we could not digest which then leaves the body because which is not needed that is called ingestion and excretion is the waste products uh, made as a byproduct of metabolic metabolic reactions in our body i agree with the definition but i don't agree with the explanation they have given in the book i wonder whatever is mentioned in this book you need to understand that. They have mentioned, yes, that is true, it is not digested. But then what is the difference in the excretion and, and, and ejection? Okay, now Yusra, you could answer. Yes, Yusra. 
Yes, uh, depression is the undigested material which leaves a, a body like it's undigested, such as cellulose. But excretion is digested and and it leaves the body. Digested waste material. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let now let's read read the paragraph. Okay, just I give you thirty seconds, and then we read together. Okay, we read it, and then we'll see what is written in this book here. As you know, many uh, many animals have another kind of waste material to get rid of. That is, they are talking about different ways of excretion. Okay, just forget about that. It's not that important. Almost always, some of the of the food that an animal uh, eats cannot be digested. Human, for example, cannot digest cellulose in our food. It goes straight through the elementary canal, which is your digestive system, and out of the anus through the feces. So in the form of feces, it goes out of your body. The cellulose is not an excretory product. They say, but we cannot say this is an excretory product. So you cannot say that cellulose is excreted or it's an excreted product. It is, of course, excreted out of your body, but we don't say it excreted a product. We call it uh, ejection. Why? It has never been involved in any metabolic reaction in the what cells? In the person cells, in your own cells. Do you think cellulose was not digested? Mean if something is digested, what does it mean? It is absorbed. If it is absorbed in the blood, then there are metabolic reactions. So there are metabol 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 met the metabolism actually the metabolic reaction generating byproduct that is actually the excretory products that is how it is excreted you know that's what we call it the excretory products we don't say cellulose an excretory product because it was never involved in any chemical reaction it was because of the physical property it remained as such if you are eating for example uh, some fruits or vegetables along with the peels so it may contain cellulose. You, you cannot digest it. We call it fibers that remains there in the, in the digestive tract. And it's good for like relieving constipation, decreasing glucose absorption, good for diabetes, good for obesity, for example. And it can never allow cholesterol level. It can, it's really good for hypercholesterolemia because people who are using drugs, they have a lot of side effects. They cannot tolerate that. And doctors would uh, would counsel them to go for salad, green leaves or cucumber and and, and, and other you know uh, uh, fiber containing uh, fruits or vegetables that will help you. So cellulose is not an excreted product because it was never involved in any metabolic reaction in the in the cell. It it is not even made inside a cell. So this is the main difference. If I see what is addition. Ejection is for those which is never part of the cell cellular reaction. It was never digested, never absorbed, never uh, generated through the metabolic reaction. And that is why we call this ejection. So it's opposite of ingestion. Ingestion is, you could say ingestion when you ingest something and that is digested and, and uh, absorbed as well. Although it's not making very good sense because something you ingest may be digested and absorbed as well. But just to remember that ingestion, something is getting in, this is I for inside, getting inside your body. In E is the exit, exit of something from your body. So that is the, the cellulose is exiting your body. Uh, this, this process called ejection, okay? And this is simply passed away from your body unchanged through the digestive system. So you're getting rid of this unchanged cellulose uh, through the feces, and this is called ejection, okay? And by the end of the chapter, I will come again for the recap and I would appreciate that you tell me what exactly is ejection. Uh, next time, inshallah, when you, when you read the chapter, you go through it. Now coming to the nitrogenous waste. This is one of the major pathway, the major byproduct. And this is very critical as well. That is why, you know, if there is renal impairment, kidneys are not working properly. And if, it's an old age, usually what happens, these nitrogenous waste products are accumulated inside your body. And it's really very toxic. As I mentioned before, that the doctor would recommend to have a, bio, a, a lab test U and E, U for urea and E for electrolytes. Because if your electrolytes, sodium, potassium, 
calcium, magnesium, chloride, or disturb, definitely it affects the homeostasis physiological system. And if urea is accumulated, it's extremely toxic. So let's talk about what exactly, how uh, this nitrogenous waste products are generated. And uh, for this description, this description is basically integrated with the diagram, this diagram. Okay, this figure, you could see here how urea is made here. So uh, what I would say that we will read the description and then we will describe this uh, diagram, this figure, and then you will write down in your own words, not necessarily you are repeating the same sentences written in the book. You just need to focus. Images are extremely important. Don't ignore it, please. I would tell my student that never ever ignore images or figures or flow charts. They are extremely important. They are much, much more important than the description itself. Description, you can, you, you can easily forget it. For example, you mentioned nitrogenous waste power. You have read it, you have understood it. But for your visual memory and to recall this concept, this is extremely important that you stepwise describe what is going on here. So first of all, let's see what is written here. They are saying these the animals produce nitrogenous waste. This is a form from excess proteins and amino acids. So what is the link of amino acids and proteins? Why we are talking about proteins and amino acids together? How they are interrelated? Who is going to answer that? Okay. Uh, Hala, yes. Uh, that's because the um, proteins and amino acids both contain nitrogen. This is very, uh, I think this is another example. Yeah, answer. Very nice. This is also an answer. Yeah, they both contain nitrogen. That's good. Very good. Yeah. But how they are interrelated in terms of function or in terms of, uh, you could say, or a requirement for our body? Uh, Yusra, you have any answer for that? Uh, the amino acids are the monosaccharides, so they join long chains to form protein molecules. That's true. That is the, yeah, both answers are correct, okay? Uh, the first one, that both contain nitrogen, and that's why we are talking about nitrogenous waste products, and that's how they are, they are describing, but the best thing is that proteins are made of amino acid, as she mentioned that many amino acids are joined together, making polypeptides long polypeptides and these peptides or polypeptides are proteins so like meat fish eggs for example these are rich in proteins so what happened when we eat proteins they are broken down to, into the small because we cannot absorb protein as such they are big molecules and it's usually we cannot so we have proteolytic enzyme what they will do they will make it into small peptides and the small peptides will be again releasing amino acids and these amino acids are basically absorbed, okay, through the digestive tract. So animals are not able to store these amino acids. These amino acids are not stored like vitamin A, iron, glucose, carbohydrates, fats. They can be easily deposited in your body, but amino acids cannot be deposited. Then what should you do? I mean, how the body would take care of these amino acids? What they, they will do with it? Because amino acids, actually, if they are in excess, if somebody has taken more meat, for example, or, or, or more fish, for example, any protein-rich diet, for example, so what will happen? You have overloaded your body with proteins. You have overloaded your body with amino acids. So definitely some of the amino acids, they are a source of energy, right? They will be, of course, utilized by your body for the synthesis of protein as well, for the enzymes, for other stuff. But the amino acids that are in excess that need to be disposed of by your body. So animals cannot store it. So what they will do, so they will break, uh, they will break down these, okay? So what is the process set? So any of that are surplus. If they are excess, more than the requirement. So what will happen? They will be broken down to form nitrogen containing excretory products. So in mammals, this substance is called urea. Urea is formed in the liver Urea is toxic substance, as well as uh, you can see it's, it's removed from, from the body by the kidneys, okay? So it's toxic and one should, I mean, should be efficient to remove 
urea from the body. If they cannot remove easily, either go for dialysis, another machine, and uh, the artificial way of management. Otherwise, patient definitely would die. When you eat proteins, digestive enzyme in your stomach, didenum, ileum, you could these uh, stomach and also didenum, these are part of your intestine, uh, break down the, uh, these proteins into amino acids. So the amino acids are absorbed into blood capillaries in the villi and your ileum. Which, so villi, I think how, how it can help in the absorption of amino acids. Why it's really, they have specifically mentioned villi here. They did not mention large intestine or later part of the intestine. Do you think large intestine can also help in the absorption of villi? Oh, sorry, in the absorption of amino acid? What do you think? What comes to your mind? Why it is important to mention villi? Why they didn't mention simply they should have mentioned in the intestine. But they specifically mention villus or villi. Uh, okay, Sundas. This is because the absorption only takes place in the small intestines, and the villi help with the uh, absorption of nutrients because of their large surface area. So one thing is the large surface area, the contact time, or the contact surface area. This is one thing. What else? And, and the rich blood supply. Wonderful. Yes, that is extremely important. They could have just mentioned, you know, that amino acids are absorbed in the intestine. This is one way of explanation. So be with me, please focus on this. This is a very important topic. And they definitely is going to ask this in the exam. In many competitive exams, you'll find this question. Why they mention villi? Because villi, first of all, are increasing surface area. Why they are projections? If you see the surface is not smooth. If surface is smooth, of course, you don't have if first of all, retention time, the food will not remain for longer time in that area, which has smooth surface, it can pass through and uh, many of the things will be wasted. Nutrient will be wasted. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a beautiful system. It retains, first of all, the food content that we are eating and it increases the contact time. A part of it maybe with, there are many villi. That's why there are many villas with the villi throughout the, uh, small intestine uh, to the wall of the intestine. So they are rich and they are called vascularity. What, why we call it vascularity mean? More blood vessels, more blood supply. And they, they are very rich in blood capillaries, good surface area. So they are really going to absorb very soon. So when they are absorbed through these capillaries, they are going to join up to the hepatic portal vein which takes the absorbed food to the liver. So remember, when if you are now reading this paragraph, you cannot make a very good logical sequence because you are not visualizing the body system. First of all, visualize your own body system. When we take protein, usually we, we, by mouth, right? We take it, we eat it, it goes through to the stomach, to the intestine, and it is digested there, amino acid are released, so from the intestine, they are absorbed through the villus or villi, the small capillaries. So these capillaries are basically getting these nutrients. They are very small there, right? The smaller network of capillaries so that they can be distributed widely so that you, they don't miss any, any, any nutrient. When, they, when these nutrients are absorbed, what, what, what happens? Now, of course, it has to go to the body. So what they are doing, they are combining in the portal vein system. This is called portal veins, right? And then portal hepatic vein, right? Is going to the, uh, through the liver. So when it's going through the liver, why is going first, it should go through the liver? Is it important? Okay, sorry, Nabi, do you have any question? Okay, go ahead. So what is the difference, difference between urine and urea? What is that? What is the difference between? Urine and urea. Oh, that is a very good question. Very nice. Yep, sure. Why not? Your, remember, urea is a byproduct. Okay, this is a chemical which is generated in, in the metabolic reaction. Urine, urine, we call it basically the water which contains urea, many other electrolytes, which is the filtered blood, you know, the filtered plasma, you could say. So your blood is basically filtered. 
So the filtrate, which is coming through the urine, this is called water. This is basically water content, right? It contains water, some glucose, little bit, sodium, and also urea. So urea, since mostly urea is excreted through the urine, so this may be one of the reasons for making a name urine. So it contains urea. So urea is contained in the water, and that is called urine. So urine is the, the liquid that we are excreting, right? The water, which is uh, we don't need. So because, you know, many chemical reactions are taking place in the cell, and there are many uh, byproducts that are generated. So what will happen? These byproducts, blood is constantly passing through, through the kidney, okay? And it almost, I think, 20 to 25% of the plasma, every moment is filtered. A lot of water is eliminated, you know, excreted, right? Filtered by the kidney. And this water, is part of it is reabsorbed. Mostly this water is reabsorbed. Many of the new, so urea will also be filtered. It, it is quickly filtered. Urea is filtered. Glucose is filtered also. Sodium, potassium, many other electrolytes. Maybe that your body does not need. So whatever your body is needing, it will be reabsorbed. They, are, they, are, they, will, they will be taken up back. They will take it back in your, uh, to your blood and uh, that will be retained by the body. So you got this answer that urea and urine are totally different things, okay? So the, the, excretion, the excretion, the urine, the liquid part that we are excreting or containing urea, sodium, and other electrolyte is called urine. But urea is the byproduct of protein metabolism. This is, uh, that is generated inside your body. Your cell is generating urea, okay? Uh, right, so when you eat protein, digestive enzymes in your stomach, okay, this we have already covered. So the liver allows some of the, so I was thinking about this one, the portal vein is going through this. So my question was, does it have any significance? Do you think that it should go through the liver? Why not directly to the blood? Why is all the blood which is collected from the uh, digestive tract is going first through the liver? Now you can integrate your immunology. You can integrate your biochemistry here. And you could also integrate your, I think, make use of common sense as well. Uh, Nabil, you can answer that. So the blood has to be clean or purified or distilled before it is uh, released. So this, this job this is done by- This is one factor. This is one factor. It has to be clean. Cleaned of what? Cleaned of- No, I think there's some problem with your Please. microphone. Sorry, what is that? Chemicals. Yeah, yeah. some of the chemicals that we are eating probably is not needed. Maybe there are some toxic materials, okay? Uh, and uh, somebody has more, they can add on it. Allah, you can add. Um, it takes to the liver because, because the liver turns all the waste products into the urea. Yeah, maybe you, you're, it depends actually on the, yes, urea depending on the, the nature of the diet that you're taking. Yes, true. There's another way that we, they are taking care of the, of the extra proteins. If you have overloaded your body with the, with the amino acids, so your liver is basically a checkpoint. It does not allow excess your amino acids. If excess your amino acids are transported to the general circle, remember that whatever is passing through the liver is going to general circulation. General means it will be everywhere in the body now. So that will be distributed throughout your body. So the liver is a checkpoint, security check. They want to take what is coming in. If the microbes are coming, sometimes the microbes can also, there are also some, um, some uh, defense system as well. So immunity cells that will take care of the pathogen as well. Most of the pathogen are destroyed by the stomach acid, and then it, if anything is coming in, so the liver will take care of it. And liver can also store things, you know. Iron, for example, glucose and carbohydrate can be stored and liver is also generating fatty acids, uh, the, the cholesterol and all the stuff. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a very good explanation. Thank you so much. That's why it's going through the portal vein. So here, uh, we'll go through, the liver allows some of the amino acids to carry on in the blood to other parts of your body. But if you have, even more than you need, then what will happen? Then some of them must be get rid of. 
So you must take, get rid of the excessive amino acids, the protein, protein rich diet. That is why it's also in Sunnah, don't stick to one diet. You should have uh, changes. You could switching to, from proteins, rich diet to just vegetables, for example, right? And olive oils and vegetables and other form of, form of, of, of plants protein, for example, rather than animal source protein like chicken, poultry, or fishes and all the stuff. So that's why it's recommended that you should have balanced diet. Balanced diet means you don't stick to one. Some kids, especially children, they don't like vegetables. They don't like cucumber and salad. So it's really dangerous. You can see here that your liver, you have to take care of your liver. You have to take care of your body. That is why fasting is always recommended. Many companions of Prophet Sallallahu they used to fast. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast. He, most of the time he would spend in hungry. Imam Bukhari, rahma, he wrote a whole book, Sahih al-Bukhari, which is the best book of the Quran. And he used to be on, uh, in, in the state of hunger in the state of fasting most of the time. So when you're fasting, your body is very efficient. You know, if you are eating too much, you have a barbecue party and you are in the hotel looking for kebab and, and, and then you do have uh, chicken pieces and, and then you have biryani and all the stuff is going to uh, overload your body with many things. I think this is really not recommended, okay? So we have to be extra careful. Counsel your parents, counsel your friends, yeah, you have a question, Yusra? Uh, your... No, sir, I just wanted to answer oh, uh, okay. for that question that you asked that, uh, sir, I also have another reason that yes, if the urea does not go to the... Uh-huh. And it goes to the blood, it can cause the pH of the blood to fall, which is not... Sir, your blood. voice is breaking. I, I, I didn't hear it properly. Could you repeat it, please? Yes, I was saying that um, another reason could also be that if the urea goes to the liver uh, first and then it does not, and then it goes to the kidneys, not directly to the blood, because if the urine is acid. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, this could be one explanation. Yes, there are many possible ways. You know, as he mentioned that you don't want extra amino acid to be circulating in the blood. You don't need it, right? So what the liver does, basically, it, it, it converts that extra amino acids into urea and then urea is easily released from the liver uh, to the blood and this blood is uh, is passing through the kidney kidneys and then urea is easily filtered and you can easily get rid of the ex yeah this is one explanation excellent so you could see it's a uh, it would be uh, it would be very wasteful to excrete the extra amino acid just like that i mean it's it, actually if you have excess amino acid does not mean you just release it like that and and I think here, this is another explanation why the blood should go through the portal, so through the liver, because liver will generate energy, okay? And by the way, even if you have forgotten everything, don't worry about that. In this description, this is why even I don't believe in this description a lot. I will integrate all these concepts in the figure, which is coming, inshallah. We are going to talk about that in a while, okay? So the enzymes in the liver split up the amino acids, as we mentioned, is 12.3. So the part containing the energy uh, is kept under, uh, it's turned into carbohydrate. As you know, the amino acids, both nitrogen and carbohydrate. So the carbohydrate part is stored for the energy in the liver. And the nitrogen part is metabolized to urea, okay? Because it cannot be stored. So the rest which is uh, uh, part of contains nitrogen is turned into urea and how urea is generated deamination. What does, what does it mean, deamination? What is deamination? Whenever it's come D, delete. Okay, one second, Muhammad. Go ahead, Muhammad. It is the remo removal of the nitrogen containing part of the uh, in time amino acid. Yes, the mine, mine part, yes, the nitrogen part, yes, too. Uh, deamination is a chemical reaction where you are, uh, if you remember, you know, these amino acids, for example, uh, containing both carbohydrate and nitrogen part. So it removed actually the amino part separately, the nitrogen part separately. 
and that is called deamination. Okay, uh, Sundus, you have any explanation you want to share? No, it was the same thing. It removes the amino group from the Yeah, whenever the deacetylation, deamination, dealkylation, de mean deleting that part, that part. The amino part is deleted from the amino acid, so it's split. And deaminase, the enzyme has deaminase. Is, is always is when it comes at the end this is enzyme basically responsible for that for, for that particular reaction so the urea dissolved in the blood plasma is then taken to the kidney to be excreted a small amount is also excreted in sweat you can see here a very small amount Nabil, your is uh, your hand is raised do you have any questions just by mistake Yeah, I was about to tell the definition of deamination breakdown of amino acid takes place in the liver. That's correct. That's correct. Very good. So liver has many other functions as well, and uh, they have actually enumerated all these functions, many of them. So we can explain all of them as well, but I think let's focus first on whatever the learning objectives we have. This is extra learning. Liver, as I mentioned, is storing and is synthesizing fibrinogens, some proteins that will help in, in blood clotting. So we'll discuss one by one, but uh, uh, since we have finished this description, so let's go to figure. They have cited here 12.3. So here is your figure. Now you could, you could go stepwise, okay? I'm sure you can read it as well, but you have your books here. So go to part one, for example, this is number one. The, what they are saying, the protein and food is taken into the elementary canal. So eating of proteins so elementary canal mean digestive tract okay this is your digestive system if you eat something it's going through the esophagus through the stomach and then going to the intestine okay and now come to the second part this is part two what does it say uh, the proteins molecules are broken down to amino acids during digestion so second part is digestion first of all now you make a logical sequence you need to think about what you are eating. Now, at this time, you are eating barbecue. Which barbecue do you like? Uh, goat ribs, hashi, camel meat, goat meat, chicken. So now we are eating barbecue, okay? So we have taken a drumstick, for example. So the drumstick we have eaten, so they are big, big chunks of proteins. We have chewed it and broken down by your mastication process and and then it goes down to the elementary tract this is the digestive system now proteolytic enzymes are there they are going to break down the proteins so what does it mean protein is basically a, what is the energy currency in protein is amino acids right so amino acids are basically released so you can see here these amino acids are going where this is number three process number three you can focus here and exactly this is de described here as well. So first proteins are taken, they are digested into amino acids, amino acids are absorbed in the, but they have extra information villi. Okay, this is villi through the villus, this is in the small intestine, okay? Absorbed here, and they are mentioned through portal when going to the liver. So what the liver does to the amino acid, because now amino acids are basically, the liver is a checkpoint. You are at the security check now, which is liver. So what does it do? So, uh, uh, Part of amino acids is needed for your body system. It goes here, four, this is number four. So this is actually till here, okay? Just concentrate and forget about this for a while now. So this part, amino acid as such are released in the bloodstream. So mean they are required for energy generation, for your protein formation. You know, your body basically needs amino acid. And What's going here in number five steps? They are, saying that, uh, they are saying that amino acids that are not needed are deaminated, this part here that we have mentioned here. So excess of amino acids that is not needed. So this part is covering here, okay? So let me uh, focus here now again. So these are, as I mentioned, they are saying here in this part that don't waste amino acid. It's, it's really not good. It's not wise to just waste amino acid because they are a source of energy. So how body is conserving energy, look at this. So this is called deamination. So what they are doing basically, they are re releasing carbohydrates and carbohydrates are stored here. 
for energy. Maybe you need it, don't need it now, but if somebody is fasting, that's why you, you, you are not eating all the time. You have taken your breakfast, you went for work, you went to school, you went for walking, jogging, exercise, you went for shopping. You, all these things are what, what they are doing, basically. You, you need energy. So this energy is now stored here in the liver. Is The liver is really good to store for you. That's why liver, you have to take good care of it. Don't eat unnecessary junk food. These days, junk food, especially in case of uh, Cheetos and all these, what do we call it, uh, Lay's and a Crunch they are using in, in, in McDonald's and many other food. I, I'm really not against of any of these shopping, shopping stores, but what I'm telling you, uh, being a pharmacologist, that there are many chemicals that they are using in these products. So these chemicals, you, you are basically uh, increasing work for the liver. The liver has to detoxify those chemicals. And while detoxifying, the liver cells are also damaged. This is why alcohol is extremely toxic to liver. Many people die in America and Canada, you will see, they call chronic cirrhosis mean the liver cannot you know normally what happens if you are eating tablets you are eating normal food you do have chemicals it will damage the cell and the regeneration process is really very efficient but in case of excessive use of drugs alcohol drink drinking alcohol is extremely dangerous because what happened it quickly damages the cell if you are eating most of the time junk food everywhere taste enhancers most of the time you are stick to or you're very much habitual to hoteling or or outside not homemade food for example so in that case liver is damaged so liver is basically taking care of these things and this is stored here and this ammonia is again released so this ammonia cannot be eliminated like that very easily of course it can ammonia just like a gas could be eliminated but it's not easy to get you get rid of ammonia so what the body does basically the liver is now converted this into urea so now the whole steps here are described this is the nitrogenous waste product how it is generated it is coming from the proteins going through the portal vein amino acids are used by your body and a part of excess amino acids is not wasted like that they will be stored in the form of carbohydrates ammonia is generated urea is this urea is toxic okay so they're getting red and this urea will come in the blood. Now this is called general circulation. So the urea is now excreted in the general circulation, uh, mean in the blood. So that will be of course excreted out of the body and, and uh, it's circulating in the body, uh, in the blood. So it will be very easily filtered. So here I think uh, we have covered this cycle. And uh, today I just took a little more time, but I think I'm not sure if uh, you are happy with this speed or we, need, we, we should not explain much, but sometimes I feel that we should have some extra explanation uh, because uh, you know this is important for you to integrate knowledge. This is called retrievable knowledge. You can easily recall those information very easily if you have broader concept. It's better to have broader concept to concise think, you know. If you have very little information and uh, your concept is vague, then it's very difficult to recall when it's needed. So these days we call it consolidation of knowledge. Consolidation of knowledge meaning please read extra books. For one topic, you could just read a couple of books. <coughs> I'm sorry. So also you could, I think uh, better is that you should use internet. You could use many resources. The best is like Khan Academy and many other resources. These are available, so you could use them. So here, I think if you want, let me, uh, they are asking about the question, so what are the two excretive products of the animal that we have identified so far? So what are those two excretive products? Yes, see if strong. Carbon dioxide and urea. That's what, yeah, that's what we have discussed. Correct. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. So what process produced these uh, two products? Uh, so I will go to Ajwa, you have not answered. Go ahead, Carbon Ajwa. dioxide is produced by respiration and urea by deamination. Wonderful. Deamination is taking place in which organ? In the liver. 
in the liver and what about the how respiration could uh, generate carbon dioxide um, respiration uh, to the alveoli in our lungs the gas exchange takes place yeah so the oxygen basically you're talking about the oxygen is reacting with the inside the cell with the glucose yes this oxidation process is generating byproducts carbon dioxide water and urea water we can make use of it yes that's good so what happens to the excess proteins you eat so this answer is here again in the figure what what, what happens to those proteins Okay, uh, uh, Nabil, you would like to answer? Okay, sir. Uh, the it is uh, protein is broken down into amino acids. Then these are absorbed through the walls of the uh, large small intestine, and then it. Okay, is, one second, uh, one second, Nabil. Uh, sorry, sorry to cut you. One thing. Always focus on the question. This is really, the informations are all corrected you, but this is not answering the question. They're saying what happens to the excess proteins you eat, excess protein you eat. So you mean you have to focus on the question, what exactly they're asking about. They're not asking about what happens to proteins. If I say what happens to proteins, you could say we are ingesting and then they are digested, amino acids are absorbed, no. They are asking what happens to excess proteins you eat. So they are uh, they are broken down producing urea which is carried to the kidneys to be excreted okay this is this is a partial answer uh, yes this is correct but it's again not full answer it's a partial yeah okay zanab the proteins they are the extra excess proteins are taken into the liver and are broken and are broken down the nitrogenous parts are, th are thrown out of the body and the part which could be used for energy is kept and stored as carbohydrates wonderful that that's the complete answer now yes if you don't write a lot of description be very smart not necessarily you need to write you remember your exam are very standardized these days especially with the cambridge or american system sat or you're using lab exam for example by medical graduates or your uh, appearing in MCAT, especially in, in these days, like GRE style questions, always focus on question. Read question twice or thrice before you answer. And then answer yourself in your mind. Are you ready to answer that? Did you, did you focus what exactly you are going to answer? So here, excess protein. So I mean, this is the first part. They are not asking anything else. This information is correct. The examiner will do what? They will cross the information that he have given. The protein is ingested, then it's broken down to amino acid. Amino acids are absorbed, and then they are uh, taken care. So they will remove that part, and they will take this part that excess amino acid or protein are split into two parts. One is part is the urea, another is carbohydrate because it is it's, it's actually currency of energy. So you need to. Uh, make use of it. So carbohydrate in the form of glycogen, for example, glycogen. That's why in during fasting, normally your blood glucose does not go low up to dangerous level. Why? When you're fasting, basically your glycogen stores are releasing glucose, and that can maintain, you know, your 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 energy level up to somehow that you can easily survive. This is this is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is specifically mentioned. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullaha. That uh, I have prescribed for you fasting, which was that was prescribed for people before you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's not something very, very, very dangerous or it's really difficult. It's very easy. Allah has taken care of all these things. Allah has already created inside your body a system where you can survive without food for the whole day. And that is, again, if uh, uh, your body system is good, of course, then people who are very obese, hypertensive, and they have diabetes, they cannot. Okay, so let's talk about some of the functions. I think then we will close. I'm sorry, I will just take five minutes more. I think we are already um, late now. The time is over. So let's talk about the, uh, th this figure you could see here. There's some of the functions of the liver. Some you could see like this is what convert excess of amino acids into urea and carbohydrates. We have discussed about that. Synthesis of plasma proteins such as fibrinogen. So remember fibrinogen is the clotting factor. It's converted to fibrin. Fibrinogen is converted to fibrin. Fibrin is clot formation. If there's a small cut, 
every day of course for example we have carts and 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 that's needed for the clotting this is clotting protein that is very very important if you could see here controls the amount of glucose in the blood from where does it come again it's uh, converting amino acid into glycogen and that is why it's uh, in in the support with support of insulin and glucagon you know glucagon is also releasing you know the maintaining the blood glucose and insulin is taking care of your extra extra glucose you know it's a uh, uh, that's why if people have less insulin, they develop diabetes. Insulin is responsible for the uh, for the your body to make use of glucose, right? So with the support of glu insulin, uh, liver is also controlling your blood glucose. Store carbohydrates in the form of polysaccharides. We mentioned here in the form of carbohydrates. These are in the form of polysaccharide like glycogen, and then glycogen are broken gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis mean they are generating glycogen glucose and glycogen lysis so they are breaking down glycogen when they are needed in case of fasting or you didn't have food for a long time to avoid hypoglycemia okay uh, they are also breaking down old blood cells for example storing iron when the blood cells are broken especially the hemoglobin part so iron should not be wasted they storing iron okay and this is one of the things that people who have anemia, your doctor would say that it's better you eat liver, right? Goat liver, chicken liver, it contains iron. So it will anemia. Anemia means you have low blood cells, red blood cells. So you can easily cure with this food as well because it contains iron. So break down harmful substances, as you mentioned, such as alcohol. Alcohol is extremely dangerous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned that they the harm is more than benefit. The benefit, the, the, the pleasure that you want to have with this alcohol is nothing when you look at the broader pros perspective of its toxicity. Toxicity is tremendous. Not only damaging your liver, is damaging the blood vessels, is damaging the brain, is damaging your vascular system, damaging your muscular system, damaging bones and all the stuff. So making your body extremely weak, very in terms of immunity, in terms of uh, st stability and strength, alcohol is extremely dangerous. Okay, uh, store vitamins, as I mentioned, a very good story for A, B, D, E, and K. And stores also potassium as an electrolyte is highly needed. Potassium, if there is any derangement in potassium, remember your heart, your heart is using sodium and potassium and calcium. If there is any derangement, any increase or decrease, so it can lead to arrhythmias. Arrhythmias mean not proper heartbeat. Okay, making cholesterol. You can see here, cholesterol is highly needed for different body function. The repair cell membrane and a high cholesterol as well as taken care by the liver. The liver is also, uh, many of the drugs are basically transporting these uh, cholesterol to be taken care by the liver. So I think till here, we will stop here and inshallah uh, coming Friday. So we'll have class Friday and Saturday, okay? Uh, we'll talk about the kidney. Uh, or human excretory system. The kidney is, uh, I would recommend that you read it. It's really very easy chapter. And uh, you you just will be, inshallah, if you, you are focused, I can guarantee you that you are prepared for exam. Don't worry about exam. You are prepared. You are, you are not going to forget it, inshallah. And uh, most of the time, I, I, I try my best to use mnemonics as well and to, to focus more on uh, how to visualize the things, you know, so that you can retain it and whenever is needed, you can retrieve that knowledge, you can recall it. When you are sitting in the exam, you're not uh, staring in the air, recalling things, what exactly was that concept and what was exactly that. So now you remember that the protein digestion, urea, how it is generated. I told you you have to think of barbecue and you are eating drumstick. What going on, then you need you remember that. So the drumstick is telling the whole story. So drumstick is a trigger for you guys, okay? And if you have any question, then we will stop it, inshallah, uh, and see you next time. Jazakallah khairan for all the time. You're most welcome to ask question. Now, or you have any other time, you want to recall something, we can do that. Okay, guys, I'm sure you have you have had good session today. See you next time. Bye-bye.